Thanks for watching my video. Today we are going to discuss our fundamental theorem of curve class um, 2 and this is again the second proof of our theorem and our st theorem statement says that if f of x is integrable in the closed interval AB meaning this f of x can be integrated in the closed interval AB and if there exists a function f of x where capital F of X is nothing but the antiderivative of F of X, okay? Such that F prime of X is equal to small f of X in this one, then this is equal to this. Integral from A to B F of X dx is F of B minus F of A. So B must be greater than A. So let's prove this. Since we have our interval AB now. Let the interval a b be divided into unequal part unequal part by the point this a is equal to x0, x1, x2, and so on, x and minus 1, x and equal to b. Okay, and uh, let me explain after that. Okay, then is h of r is h r is x r minus x r minus 1 such that r is 1 2 3 up to and thumbs so we have our interval a b this one a and b now we are going to divide this in unequal part assume that these are equal okay? We take a to be x0 and x is x1 and so on up to x and minus 1. We take b to be xn. Okay, this means xrn xr minus 1 is between a and b. Example if, if you put r to be 1, this is x1 minus x0, which is x1 minus x0. So since x1 is greater, so I can subtract them. So we will get this. And where has r? This has r is nothing again, but this is the sub interval between these two again. These two points. Okay. In this, we take again sub interval again between these two. Example between x0 and x1, we take uh, sub interval again, which is has r again. Okay. So this mean has r is between this one so or has r is between x r minus one and x r okay now in this sub interval in each sub interval we apply mean value theorem or in case we can, in other case we can say Langram mean value theorem so capital F of XR minus capital F of XR minus 1 this to our same okay don't divide it by x r minus x r minus one which is f prime of let me take c function okay this is not a function okay just take c to denote or some function because our mean value theorem states that f of b minus in short i can write 
b may not say a is equal to f prime of c okay this is our mean value theorem so b is xr a is xr minus 1 and c we take as xi c c okay this is is nothing but xi c found c okay so now let's simplify this f of xr minus f of x r minus 1 is equal to x of r minus x of r minus 1 f prime of cr okay cr so this is f of x r minus f of x r minus 1 this r and r minus 1 is the subscript okay x r minus x r minus 1 is again hayes r okay hayes r f prime of x r so f of x r minus f of x r minus 1 is equal to hayes r f prime of something here f prime of x is equal to x f of x so if i put x to b or c okay then mean this will be f of or c okay now now in it sub interval in this sub interval we write that mean if now putting r is equal to 1 2 3 and so on up to n now if i put r equal to 1 2 3 up to n and then what can we get if I put R to be 1 and this is F of X R minus F of X naught okay F of X1 minus F of X naught which is Hays 1 since I put R to be 1 Hays 1 F of F of c1 okay now again if i if you put here r to be 2 again so you get f of x2 minus f of x1 which is phase 2 f of c2 f of x3 minus f of x2 is equal to h3 f of c3 so applying this up to n terms before n terms let me take n minus 1 term f of x and minus 1 minus f of x and minus 2 is equal to h and minus 1 f of c and minus 1 and for n terms f of x n minus f of x n minus 1 equal to has an f of c n we get this now adding column wise now if if we add column wise like this what can we get we know that this two will get cancer this and this this cancer out here okay and this and there's something we cancer this and this will cancer out now what we are left is f of x and minus f of x not only so adding up them h and f of 
C1 plus H2F of C2 plus H3F of C3 plus and so on plus HN F of CN okay now this one this one this is or sum and one is xn xn here xn we take to be b okay so this is b minus x naught we take to be a so f of a so summation from r equal to 1 to n is r f of CR okay this is our summation of this one now taking limit s h tends to 0 so we get our left hand side is what free free from act haze okay there is no haze in our left hand side so this does not affect our limit our limit doesn't affect this one yeah, so it will be still the same limit h tends to 0 sum from r equal to 1 to n h is r f of cr so this is okay we can get now <coughs> from in the def definite integral is limit of sum that I have proved in the previous one in, in there we have limit h tends to 0 sum from r equal to 1 to n h is r f of cr is coming out to be integral from a to b f of x dx okay that mean our right hand side this become our integral from a to b f of x so a to b f of x dx is f of b minus f of a so this proof our fundamental theorem <coughs>